Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds, back in the studio. It is Monday. It's cold. Can't believe we're almost to April and it feels like this. But inside, it was nice and warm, and we saw some great, great basketball this weekend. How's your bracket doing? Well, I didn't throw one out. but You didn't I get did. one now, done. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Don't interrupt. I played them game by game. That's what I do instead of filling out the bracket that uh, way. I don't get surprised. But the game by game, I did okay. Nonetheless, this has been some very, very good basketball. And the referees have re- really let them play. This action is so physical, I can't believe it. Might as well be a football game out there. Shoulder pads and helmets and all that sort of thing. Because they're really climb, uh, j- just just a physical game underneath. There've been some really good games, some not so good. Fairly Dickinson Hall saw their uh, little march come to an end at the expense of Florida Atlantic, which is a Cinderella, but yet they are. They're really very very good. There were some other upsets. Women's basketball, Stanford, got uh, upset yesterday. That's a number one seed by Ole Miss. But over and above that, things are playing pretty much the way we thought they would, although two of the men's number one seeds are now out of there, Purdue and Kansas. But there are two remaining, and that's pretty much par for the course. Mm -hmm. Well, I did fill out a bracket, and we have a little pool, I think, what, 12 people here at work? I'm number one right now. Very good, sir. So as long as Alabama stays on... And uh, the games I picked to win, which I believe, I'm going to say that I do have um, K-State beating Michigan State uh, this weekend. So, But that, <laughs> I, I wanted to bring that up. I thought that game yesterday was probably one of my favorites so far this year. This is really good when Kansas State played extremely well, and they deserve to be where they are. They're not a fluke. They've been a, a, a national power all year long, and I think they'll carry that over. They're playing at Madison Square Garden in New York, and that'll be that'll be a terrific two days for them. At least we hope it's two days anyway. Yeah, and uh, first-year coach, he's already got Big 12 Coach of the Year, so really good story for him. And again, you know, I know I'm a big-time K-State homer, but uh, it's good to see those guys he doing what they can do. He also an area assistant coach in Rod Perry, one of the Bears' very fine players under the Charlie Spoonhour era, who is out there helping him. Came over from Link Prep down in Branson. Okay, oh yeah, yeah, he those kids. This summer, yeah. And uh, Rod's helped Big time. That's awesome to hear. Um, so, any surprises for you this weekend? Yeah, the fairly Dickinson beating Purdue, although Purdue, I didn't have them making it to the Final Four. Uh, but losing that early to fairly Dickinson, it's only the second time that a one has ever lost to a 16. The other time was uh, Virginia and Maryland, Baltimore County. But Purdue just simply, even though they have the big deal, doesn't doesn't play very well. Uh, that, of course, Fairleigh Dickinson's out of it now. Mizzou being dominated by Princeton. I really have to tell you that was a surprise to me because physically Princeton doesn't match up to Missouri. But here's the deal. About six or seven minutes into the game, I thought to myself, boy, Missouri is in trouble here. Princeton's doing exactly what you do on defense. They took Kobe Bryant, uh, Brown, I should say, Kobe Brown right out of the game. He did finish with 12 points, but they limited his dominating underneath. And then Princeton hitting from three-point range, and they're very good at doing that. They were 12 of 33. That's 36 points from three-point range, and Missouri had 18 from three-point range, and therein lies the difference. And that is that really belies the way Mizzou has played this year because they've been a good three-point shooting team. But the Princeton defense and Princeton's failure, not, not failure on their part, but their ability to keep Missouri from stealing the ball. And they did it by passing and backpicking. It was a brilliant game plan. Absolutely brilliant. And while it was a surprise, it isn't a surprise because Princeton plays that way. Yeah, well, uh, we can mention this being the last uh, time we're going to see this tournament here in Springfield, at least for the next five years, but it came to an end this weekend. Who are the winners? Well, both of the Vashon teams from St. Louis won in Class 4. The men, or the boys, and the girls, they both were winners. Saint, uh, it's St. Charles Lutheran won the girls, and uh, Cardinal Ritter from St. Louis won the boys in Class 5, and National Power St. Louis Incarnate Word won the girls in Class 6, beating Columbia Rock Bridge, and in the boys, you knew this was going to happen. Staley from Kansas City beat Springfield Kickapoo 49-32. Staley finishes with a record of 30 wins and two losses. And both their losses 
were in the Tournament of Champions. That's how good that Staley team is. They were big time, great players, and Kickapoo knew it. Kickapoo knew ahead of time that they might be physically overmatched, and Staley is very, very, very good. Number one team in the state, number one maybe in the Midwest. And that's so it's not any kind of a, uh, an embarrassment at all. Nice effort by Kickapoo to get there. Really good season for them, but you really want them to taste victory. But, man, that team they were playing, big. it's no big and joke. Good. Yeah, big time. So uh, I saw a really funny video of, uh, I think it was Team Venezuela, found out one of their players is scared of cats. And they, really? Yeah, chasing him down with a cat and a little carrier. I was dying. He was trying to hit him with a baseball bat. He is deathly afraid of cats. I can't remember who the player was. But anyway, that leads me into uh, World Baseball Classic, of course, going on. All these players who are getting a chance to play with each other and different world teams. And it's pretty cool for the sport um, what's happening as far as the Team USA goes. Now, Team USA is into the championship tomorrow night. And that is really very good. Their game with Venezuela on Saturday was... Nothing short of outstanding. Grand slam in the eighth inning by Trey Turner, the Philadelphia Phillies shortstop, who has been absolutely on fire in the last couple of days. He has 10 RBIs in the last couple of games. Anyway, that's beside the point. Sounds like someone's proud of his boy. (laughs) Trey is a really good player. He also signed a Boku millions of dollars contract with the Phillies uh, to lure him over as a free agent from the Dodgers. Anyway, that's beside the point. Here's the deal. The Venezuelan team lost their star player, Jose Altuve of the Houston Astros. He broke his thumb. And it was a United States pitcher who hit him, and not on purpose, of course, but threw him inside, and Altuve hit him right in the thumb and broke it. Surgery out probably for the at least half of this season, and that really hurts the World Series champion Astros big time. He's their star and their captain. The Venezuelan team was really, really good. A lot of all major leaguers, and most of them live in this country, but they are Venezuelan, so they played for the national team. Cuba last night, I've got to tell you, I was disappointed. Uh, they're not the Cuba of the past. They had a couple of major leaguers on their team, and there's a reason why it was only a couple of them. The rest of the Cuban players in this country were invited to play and said, We're not doing it. Not yet. Interesting. Hell with you people. Interesting. In and so, uh, they, for instance, here's uh, Sandy Alcantara, the former Springfield Cardinal, Cuban, the Cy Young Award winner. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You people can shove it where the sun doesn't shine. Interesting. Oh, that's well. how they think about the government. Anyway, uh, Cuba loads the bases with nobody out and scores one run with nobody out in the first inning, and the one run is all they got. I knew then this game's over. USA will kick their behinds and did 14-2. to 14-2. to Turner had another couple of home runs last night. Uh, Adam Wainwright Really struggled in the first inning, but got out of the jam and then pitched uh, three more innings after that, had four innings. And Miles Michaelis came in to finish it up for the USA. Cuba never threatened. They just simply did not have the, the weapons to do it. It's not the Cuban team of the past. They're not bad players, and most of them are minor leaguers in this country who decided to play for their team and caught hell from the crowd. crowd was a sellout, 35,000. Now remember, now this is Miami. And they're playing the stadium where they play is in Little Havana. So the crowd was very heavily Cuban, but they're all anti-Castro. Well, yeah, (laughs) because they all left that country. Yeah, they're giving the Cuban. (laughs) Yeah, they got on a raft and got the hell out. Um, Anyway, the bottom bottom line is this, though. USA does win 14-2 and will play for the championship tomorrow night. Um, MSU uh, baseball team played this weekend? Yeah, they had the 10th-ranked team in America, East Carolina, played them in Greenville and lost all three games. I was kind of hoping the Bears might be able to take one of them. Came close on Saturday, lost 4-3 with a run in the last of the ninth inning. But other than that, uh, had trouble staying with this team. And it was the Bears pitching that... uh, evaporated for, to some extent, but they're hitting. This is a good offensive team that the Bears had, but East Carolina is a big-time ball club, and they were able to come away with the win. So East Carolina takes all three in this one, and Drury takes three out of four from William Jewell this weekend. Between that, the World Baseball Classic, all the basketball going on, it's crazy to think there was also some racing happening this weekend, but you know what? NASCAR is every Sunday who got the win. Joey Lugano running at Road Atlanta, which is the Atlanta Motor Speedway, the Georgia Motor Speedway, as a matter of fact, near Atlanta. 
And Logano, who has been around racing now for a number of years, wins in Atlanta for the very first time. And he won it on the final laps. He got pushed to victory. That's how they do it. Teammates will push each other. And Logano gets that checkered flag. So put him in as the winner of NASCAR for this weekend. Ned, you have a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow.